In this video, we are going to learn how to solve these MIT integration questions using the Casio FX901 ES Plus scientific calculator, fast and seconds for multiple choice questions. Now, after going through this video, I guarantee you that you will be able to solve problems involving integration, whether definite or indefinite integration with the Casio calculator. So, ensure you stay with me to the very end of this video. In my previous video, I talked about how you can solve Harvard and Oxford University integration calculus problems using the Casio calculator. So in this video, we are going to experiment with these MIT integration questions we have here. Okay, so ensure you stay at the very end. Without wasting much time, let's get the Casio calculator and go into the details. So this is Casio FS901 ES Plus scientific calculator. Now, for the peoples of people that might be watching, my video for the very first time i'm going to start from the beginning to explain how you can use this Casio calculator to solve integration problems okay so ensure you pay attention as this is the end of this video the very first thing you have to do when you come to solving integration with the Casio calculator you have to reset the calculator clear it okay i recommend this often because what the client does is that it's removes or wipe out any previous value you might have stored on the calculator so that it will not interfere with the current calculation you want to do so to quickly reset this calcio calculator all you have to do is to press shift button 9 pull the instruction press 3 press equal to press equal to again so we have reset the calculator now it's not cleared the next thing you have to do will be to ensure that you put your calculator in radium mode by default this calculator is in degree okay it's not recommended that you should solve problems like this advanced problems like this in degree mode when you do so there are some calculations that will not give you when you perform with it you will not get the right answer that's why it's recommended that you should always put it in radium mode which is the ideal mode that we give you the right result or answer so to put it in radium mode you press shift mode for this calculator then press 4 option 4 is for radium so it's not a radium mode okay now the very first problem we have here is definite integration it has upper and lower limits in this type of integration you don't need to store any number when we get to question 2 i'm going to say some things you need to take note of when you come to solving this kind of problem that involves question two. This is indefinite integration, but for this definite one, is straightforward. Let's just go ahead and impute the functions on this calculator. So this is the definite integral function button. You press it. Having ensured that the calculator is in radial mode, very, very important. So the upper limit there is one, and the lower limit is zero. Okay. Then you go to this center box and impute this exponential function there. So there we have exponential, press the power exponential, press the power x. So to impute it, you press shift this lane button, then press shift again, this lane button, then the last power there is x, alpha x, that's what you press, bring x on the calculator. Then you come down, come down again, you put minus. Okay, we have exponential again. Shift this button. Exponential will come out, and we have the power exponential to the power x. Press x, alpha x. Then you come down once, this time around. Then put minus x, alpha x. So that's what we're going to do. So that's exactly what we have as the question there. The dx stands for function, though it's already here. Now that we have done imputing these values, let's press is it equal to and see what we are going to get as our value. So when we press equal to here, so we have 2.85. Right now we're going to simplify the options to see the one that will give us 2.85. Anyone that gives us 2.85 will be our result or answer so let's delete this 
Okay, so remember, we got 2.85. Let's evaluate option A. So we have exponential. So we have shift lane. Sorry, we have shift lane exponential alpha this. Okay, when we press alpha and this button, it will bring out this, this exponential without power. So we have minus one. Okay, you come down and put minus exponential alpha this. Okay, so that's it. Let me check if there are any other value there. So let's press record and so we're going to have 2.85 correct. So this is our answer option A is as simple as that guys. So that's basically how you can solve definite integration with the Casio calculator. Okay. So before you call it a class, let's solve this question so that it involves indefinite integration. So let's wipe this. So for question two, this is indefinite integration. It does not have upper and lower limits. Unlike this question one, it has upper and lower limit. So for solving indefinite integration, you need to store a number. Okay, very important. And I recommend two for people I teach because I have found two to be ideal value that always gives the right answer in most cases. Okay, so to store a number on this calculator, you press that number first, then press equal to. I want to store it as x. You press shift this button, I will say store x. So it, it will indicate that this value x has been stored as 2 on this calculator. So let's go ahead and use this to be stored to firstly simplify or evaluate this question. That's the idea behind solving indefinite integration. You simplify the question with the stored value and then differentiate the options to get your answer. Okay, so to simplify this question, let's input the values exactly on the calculator. So we have alpha x cube. Okay, then we have sine x square alpha x square. Close the bracket dx. Okay, what it stands for there is function. So basically, we are evaluating s cube sine s square. Let's press the quote and see what we're going to have as a result or output. So we have minus 6.05. Right now, we are going to differentiate the options. Anyone that gives us minus 6.05 will basically be the answer. So to do this, let's bring out the d over dx function. To do that, we press shift this button and it will come out. So option a says 0 b none so let's check option c is in fraction always make use of this fraction button when dealing with fractions okay so we have sine x alpha x square okay go to the brackets we have minus alpha x square okay cos x square that's cos alpha x so we put square first square okay over two so you have to ensure one more thing that the number of brackets are balanced the one at the left side of this expression equals the one at the right hand of this expression as you can see, at the left side, we have one bracket, this one, and at the right side, we also have one bracket. Very, very important. If the brackets are not balanced, you will end up having syntax error as the output. So ensure that the brackets are always balanced. So having known that, you go to this place and impute the two you stored. Very, very important. So we are going to impute two here. Let's press the code sooner and see if we are going to have minus 6.05. That's what we got. Okay. Correct. So this is minus 6.05. So our correct answer is option C. Alright. So that's basically how you can deal with problems involving definite and indefinite integration. Hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Now, if you are new to the channel, ensure you hit the subscribe button for to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, so like, share, and comment on this video. Tell me how you feel from what you have learned from this class. If you seem to have 
any specific questions asked regarding this video or what I've just explained in this video, feel free to leave your question in the comment section below and I'm sure to give you a response. Okay, now for my judgment regarding the ones we have solved so far, both the Harvard integration question, the Oxford integration questions, and this one we just solved now, this MIT. These MIT integration questions to me, if you ask me, seem more difficult than the Harvard questions we solve and the Oxford questions we solve. We have also done one Chinese integration questions. Okay, so that Chinese integration question, though it definitely did, is the most difficult if you are comparing all of them for my judgment. Okay, so that's it for this class, guys. I will see you in my subsequent video. Thanks for watching. So don't forget to reset calculator once you are done. Just press Shift button 9 to the instruction and it will reset. So I see you in my subsequent video. Thanks for watching.